Hey there, welcome in that new Golem tutorial. In this video we will speak about how to customize uh, the characters from the character pack to uh, make them achieve the look that you're after. So I uh, just uh, installed the Golem character pack here and open uh, one of the sample scene which comes with it which is called the demo underscore stadium. And when you open it, you get prompt with that small window which is asking you which uh, props diversity you'd like to use. Uh, my characters here, the, the crowd man that uh, we are uh, delivering within the character pack comes in two versions. One which is a light version which has really reduced set of assets. Uh, it's, you know, only for uh, internal tests most of the time. Uh, or you can also switch for complete which is a, you know, a full uh, customized character with plenty of meshes and uh, plenty of shading diversity. So if you are in production, you probably want to use the complete version. Then I'm uh, asked which rendering engine I would like to use. So I'm gonna use Arnold and um, before I uh, click on that button, feel free to also open uh, the related tutorial in the browser. So it will show you how you can build uh, that exact scene from scratch uh, and make the nodes by yourself. So I'm just gonna use Arnold here. And uh, while I'm pressing that button, you will import uh, the character, the complete version of the character in the background, put that into the origin of the scene with all the shaders and uh, also create uh, some Arnold light and also um, set Arnold as the current rendering. So I can just uh, close those windows now. And uh, as you can see, as I was saying now at the scene origin, you're having that uh, uh, kind of oboe character which is our character pack uh, casual man asset with plenty of assets skinned at the same place and with that character you can feel that we can make a lot of uh, variation of that you can uh, by yourself check uh, what's in it so we got the different parts here they're sold into different groups if we were just looking at some uh, hair meshes you can see there you got like more than 20 something hair with some uh, caps as well and uh, different shapes of hair. So this is the character uh, we are using here and uh, just uh, to make a point about that if I launch the scene for a couple of frames I can see um, what's going on here. So that's my characters being instanced, uh, the, the shaders are getting loaded into the background and uh, now I'm having all my behaviors running and being executed. So you got two ways uh, here to customize uh, the props. It can be made at simulation time. Uh, I can see that the character is having a kind of a trench coat, which is not really compatible uh, with the rest of the scene. So I'm gonna probably remove that. So you can do that either at uh, simulation time or in cache replay time. A really good thing about uh, the way the assets uh, repartition is done is that it's done after the simulation has been done. So it means that you can change the geometry repartition and the shading repartition even when uh, the simulation has been exported. So I'm going to show you the two ways here. Um, I'm having three different types of character here. Uh, I'm having the anti-tap one, two and three which probably have different behaviors. And uh, if we take a look here that uh, Anti-type one is using a rendering type called crowd man. Uh, Anti-type two is using uh, the same rendering type, and anti-type three is using the flag uh, rendering type. So that's just as a small importance when we're going to deal with weight. It means that we're going to change the weight for those two types, crowd man and crowd man underscore flags. So let's get started. If I want to edit the weights of the geometry, I'm going to um, go into my entity types I would like to edit, and I'm going to press on that button. It's going to display the character maker and uh, it's going to load within that uh, character maker the skeleton. So here it is. And the skeleton and the geometry partition. So here this is the way my skeleton is done. So I don't really care about that part. It's pretty fixed and I'm okay with that. Uh, the part I want to deal with is probably more the geometry. So um, this is how the geometry panels look like and you can navigate uh, with that geometry panel. It's pretty heavy because we got all those meshes, all those groups of assets. If you want to reduce that, you can use the shift and uh, your uh, mouse wheel. Bringing that up will close uh, all the groups uh, which are under by one level of hierarchy and then afterwards uh, you get uh, your whole graph there. So as I was saying, uh, we got two types here in, into that scene, the crowd man and the crowd man flag. Uh, two types are using that um, uh, type here. One type is using that flag type here. So let's say this is going to be a summer game and I can see there's way too much people wearing those uh, bomber jacket. I would like to remove that. Um, 
So I, I would have to edit my crowdman and my crowdman flags to do so. So I can edit uh, the head, uh, uh, meshes, face hair, glasses, uh, other coats. So this is where exactly where I want to be. And let's say I don't want to have any other codes on my crowd man types. I just put that to uh, zero. I can right click on the group, set that to zero. And you can see now everything brings to zero. Uh, another option would have to be done it manually, uh, bring those all to zero or just to pump that to something else. Uh, that one, so that's the empty group, to, just to say that nothing will be assigned to the characters. Really up to you to change that if you want. Uh, if you put that to zero, it would just mean that none of the character will have anything. Uh, if it's non-zero, it will have exactly the same result. So let's, um, um, yeah, we need to, uh, for this to be taken into account at simulation or cache replay, we need to save the character file. And I'm uh, also gonna do that uh, for the other type here. So I'm gonna put the um, other code weight to zero, except, well, well everything to zero so you can see that uh, it will work even if the empty here is set to zero as well and uh, now if i just uh, rewind the simulation and uh, replay that for a couple of frames it will adapt automatically so you can see now no more bombers uh, no more trench coat jackets uh, but still some variation on the rest uh, so it just means that uh, all my modifications have been taken into account it's uh, so it's a game in summer, so probably I would like to uh, put uh, everything to zero in terms of undercoat and accept, maybe bring some uh, uh, torso t-shirts or torso short sleeves, long sleeves, uh, neckline. We try to provide, um, you know, convenient names for uh, the different assets. So you don't have to dig into the geometry to figure what's what. So here, just on the stuff which uh, looks um, like t-shirts, I'm gonna put some non-zero weights and it just means that my character will uh, be assigned with this. Uh, there's a t-shirt short here. Okay, the rest is long sleeve, whatever, a sweatshirt pull, uh, pullover. And um, on the pants, I uh, probably want to uh, increase the chance of having a short or a Bermuda rather than uh, having long folds and uh, long stretch here and there. Uh, this is uh, going to be done into the flag uh, type because we de described two flags. I can just do exactly uh, something similar here. Um, one way we could also maybe have inherited, uh, we could have made uh, maybe an hierarchy of rendering types. This has not been made here. But uh, we could have inherited from one rendering type and uh, then describing uh, the regular uh, crowdman and the regular flag below one. And we will just have to change that once. But uh, in just in the way it's been done into that file, that's not be uh, that's not going to be convenient. So we'll just have to redo that really quickly here. Put some random weights here. And uh, regarding the pants, uh, we're going to just pump up the short pants and the Bermuda as we did before. And we can see now 20% of the characters will have that asset here. And as always, we're going to save that. And uh, when it's going to be saved, now if we relaunch the geometry, we'll have, you know, characters mostly with t-shirts and uh, um, uh, long pants, short pants or Bermuda. Uh, here you can see within the viewport, they all like pretty... Uh, uh, unsaturated, they're pretty grayish. Uh, we got that uh, green-ish uh, texture for the uh, for the short pants, that gray-blue uh, texture for uh, the t-shirts. Obviously, when we're gonna render that, we'll have shading variation because we've been defining some shading variation on the characters. Um, so the way we can deal with that, the, so sorry that the shading variation is not really is not visible at viewport uh, because it's um, uh, to uh, it's too computer, uh, we, it's asking too much performances to display all the shading version in the viewport on the GPU. So we only let the uh, rendering engine deal with that. So if we want to um, see what's going on in terms of shading, we can export the scene. Uh, and uh, here I'm just gonna export for the first hundred of frames. So now it's uh, exporting the cache. Um, and just to make my point, I'm probably going to remove the, the glasses afterwards to show you that even when the simulation has been done, you can still uh, change that shading, uh, that geometry repartition I, I've been uh, playing with, uh, because those those geometry repartition is not baked into the simulation cache. So here we go. So now we are not anymore into simulation mode. We can just uh, move the time freely and see what's going on. 
And uh, let's say I don't have to, I don't want to have those uh, uh, glasses anymore. I can just uh, jump into the glasses group here. Uh, probably put everything to zero. And I'm gonna save. I'm I'm just doing that on the crowdman um, uh, type, not on the flag. So some of the flag characters will have uh, some glasses. And uh, now I can just go into the cache proxy. And uh, probably if I just ask to refresh the cache, now you can see some glasses been removed. Uh, so no need to re-export the cache. So once the cache has been uh, exported, you're free to change whatever you want to, right? Um, so what about the the shading now? Um, if I uh, render that scene, so let let maybe uh, move that back so we have a wider angle of the scene. We can check before uh, launching the render uh, the rendering computation that everything is proper using the render checker. So we're good. And I'm just gonna uh, use Arnold here. It's probably gonna take a while because he needs to convert uh, the texture as a TX. Uh, it's a pre-process for Arnold. So uh, uh, we'll let him uh, do that uh, in the background. So we got plenty of textures because uh, all those mesh assets being assigned to the characters. And once the texture has been converted, uh, it will use the procedural rendering and the procedural plugins to do the geometry creation and the shading creation. So yeah, let's wait for just a couple of seconds for that process to happen. It's just happening uh, once. If you're familiar with Arnold, you already know that. And uh, I'll probably show you right after how you can edit that uh, shading version afterwards. Okay, nearly there. Now the rendering is starting. Oh, and uh, yeah, I've been uh, changing my presets uh, because it's using the 10% test resolution. So let's go with the original uh, camera panel. But we can feel even from that small render here, we can feel that the characters, they're having a couple of uh, shading variation here. So let's say we don't want to have exactly the shading repartition, but we want to have something different. Uh, let's see how we can uh, maybe uh, edit this uh, slightly. Okay, so uh, we can see here we got uh, skin uh, variation, skin texture variation, we got some flags variation, we can see some characters wearing a uh, yellow t-shirt, some characters wearing um, um, green, blue, uh, wide range of color. So that's uh, color assignment here. Uh, if we need to change that, uh, we need to figure which mesh we're uh, looking at. So we're going to go into the undercoat here, which is uh, having all those t-shirts. Um, this is uh, the t-shirt group here, the torso t-shirt and all those um, all those t-shirt meshes are all sh sharing the same asset. So here as well, I'm still using that shift uh, uh, mouse wheel key. So it's using the man MD torso uh, t-shirt SG. Uh, and uh, we can just uh, quickly uh, look at what's behind here. We having a, a shader material here and we having also an attribute to make some variation. So there's um, apparently there's 21 different colors here and also some U version being applied. Uh, this is all being described at the, the material level here. So this is um, all happening within the Hyper shade. So we've been plugging 21 textures to that shader and really up to us to figure which one we want to keep by replugging or reducing uh, the attribute we want to use. So let's say we want other characters to use the same uh, texture. Maybe first thing we can do is figure uh, what that texture. So what's that number of the texture and uh, we can just reduce the, um, uh, the, the different attributes that we're having uh, to just assign that texture. And here we go. So that's the t-shirt texture, texture. Let's start again. This is the material. The base color is connected to a switch which has multiple entries and all those uh, different nodes connected to it. So I can see here, for example, there's a green uh, texture which is connected to the entry which is four. So if all the characters get assigned with a four value uh, with the shader attribute, it means that all the characters will be green. So I've got multiple ways of doing that. Either I can unplug the others and just plug the texture I want to and clean that in. 
Uh, that character is really multi-purpose. You can uh, put that into a city, into a stadium. So it's got plenty of materials. And it's really up to you to figure which one you want to keep and make your own version of it. Uh, but yeah, let's say um, I want to keep um, uh, only the green. Uh, what's connected to the five? Let's see. Um, green, purple is going to be five. And uh, red is going to be six. Maybe I just want to keep those five, uh, four, five, six range of textures. Um, I just have to go within my uh, character maker setting, go into my t-shirt setting, go into my attribute here, which is the one which is decided which the value of the switch. And I can just say the minimum value is going to be four, the maximum value is going to be six. I just have to save that. And now if I render my scene, let's display the render view. I'll get my characters being rendered with only a subset of textures for the t-shirt and you can do something similar for uh, the short pants and you can probably do something similar for the flags, put the texture that you need and uh, you're done. So let's uh, wait for the render to uh, uh, produce something. One of the good practice also you can do is make a separate version of that character. So let's say you make a, your own uh, stadium shot. Uh, you can copy the character file make uh, some specific types, set some specific uh, variations with uh, what I've been showing you. You can also uh, open the shading file, uh, which is a, a Maya scene with all the characters in it and all the variations. So you can take this as a, a template and uh, change whatever you need. And uh, whenever you're having a stadium, you can just uh, bring that in. So uh, let's see uh, how's the rendering is looking like. So, okay, a few characters are starting to appear. So this is exactly what we were expecting. I can see some uh, red uh, t-shirt characters, some uh, green and some uh, purple. So this is exactly the range we've been specifying. And uh, you will just have to put your own textures here to make them look more like uh, stadium crowds and uh, you'll be good. So I'll uh, see you into the next video.